My name is Francina Waluhi. I just want to tell the world what God has done for my life. I was born in a family where we believe in our ancestral spirits. We were worshiping them. They were given blood maybe once a year. So myself, when I was 16, I was possessed by the ancestral spirits, but I was still at high school. So my parents had to plead with the spirits so that they can wait for me until when I'm grown up. And when I was 20, the ancestral spirits re remembered the covenant that we had with them. They came back very strong where I couldn't control them. So I had to surrender to them. I went to my grandparents, my mother's parents to train me as a Sangoma. I went there, they trained me, but the problem was uh, one of the ancestral spirits, they didn't know how to, to train uh, that spirit. So they made me to go to Guiani, where they trained me, they took me to the river to initiate me for this other ancestral spirit. So I came back, but when I was, I came back, and that time I came back being a Sangoma, a strong one. So, but when I grow up, I had this in my mind because we, we suffered a lot uh, through poverty. I said, I, I told myself that when I grow up, I just want one child. I thought maybe the poverty in my family is because we were three. So we had to grow up very hard. And that mind brought me to, uh, to look for people for who can help me with abortions. Uh, every time when I fell pregnant, I said, no, I didn't want many children. I needed one child. Now I can see these children are many, so you have to help me. So I went to these people. I will pay the money. The first abortion was in 1980, and then the second one, it was in 1984, the third one, 1987, uh, the last one, 1988. And 1988 is when I, I, I met the Lord Jesus Christ. It was through this abortion. I went to the hospital in Atridgeville, and they admitted me like 10 a.m. And that time I was a Sangoma, full, 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 full time Sangoma. And then I went to the hospital. They admitted me at 10 a.m. But the fourth abortion, it was different from the, the first, the, the second, and the third. This one, for three days, I didn't eat anything. I couldn't eat anything because it was like, I'm not hungry. I took only a Sprite for day and night. And then my body was sweating. A lot of water came out. I didn't understand what was going on until I was admitted in the hospital in Kalafum. And then 10 a.m., so half past five, they took me to Ward 11, where I was going to the doctor will treat me from that word. So I was lying there when, when because 1987, I went to Harankua. So when the doctor asked me, Francina, did you want this child? I told him the truth. I said, no, I didn't want this child. And the doctor was so angry with me. And the treatment was so bad. So I thought maybe... He was angry, so that is why 1988, I didn't went to Harangua, I went to California. I was running away from uh, that doctor. I thought he will remember me because it was too soon. So California, I went there in 1984. I thought they will, they will be forgetting about me. But to my surprise, when I get into the ward, the sister, uh, just talk to the porters. He said to them, you know the person you are bringing in, I know her. That person is Francina Valui from Harangua. And I was so scared because that time abortion was still illegal. 
And I thought the, the sister will let the police and they will take, take me to jail. So when she said to me, it's you, Francina, can you see I still remember you? I said to her, yes, it's me. He said to me, okay, this hospital is so, is, is so nice for you. I said, no, it's not about nice or good or what. I'm sick and please leave me alone because I'm not, I, I didn't come to church office. I'm in the hospital to be treated. He said, no, I'm not fighting with you. And then he said to the brothers, those who were helping me, put her on this bed. I will help her after after this patient. When they put me on top of the bed, I I felt I am hungry. That hunger, I, I cannot compare with any day. I used to, now as I'm, I'm a Christian, I, I, I can go to 40 days fasting, but that hunger of that day, no, is uncomparable. So I said to her, now I'm hungry, Who's going to give me food? Because for three days and three nights, I couldn't eat, so I took only Sprite. But until that time, I had that I'm hungry. And I asked her, please, sister, can you give me something to eat? If only you can give me pap and meat. And she said to me, no, 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 no. You were fighting me just now, and you want me to help you with food. I said, but that one was a joke. Please, just help me. I'm dying. I want food. And she said, no, let me check your, 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 your papers. She said to me, no, you can't, we can't give you food because now, 6 o'clock, you are going to the theater. So he, truly, 6 o'clock, those brothers came back and she prepared me for theater. I went to the theater. So when I, I get into the theater, the, the, the watch on the wall was 6 o'clock the time. Was six, was seven o'clock, and then from there I don't know what happened because they make you to sleep there. Then when I wake up, I find that I feel like I, I, I'm vomiting. I want to vomit, so the sister was near me. He gave me something so that I mustn't vomit on top of the, the bed. And then after, she called the people from Ward Eleven. She said. Uh, Francina now is awake. You can come and take her to, to Ward 11. They came. There were two nurses. Then I can hear them as they were talking to each other, but they were taking me to the ward. When we get there, they put me uh, on my bed, and they they took my, the, 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 I don't know, the, we call it grips. So they put them uh, well, and they said to me, Francina, if you feel like you are vomiting, don't vomit on top of your bed. Please use this. They gave me something to, to use. So they left. After they left, I don't know, half a second or a minute, I, I feel like now my body, my whole body is shaking. And I ask myself, what is this? What is going on? Why my body is so shaking? I'm not getting cold, but my body is shaking. And the shaking was strong, strong, strong. So I said, I, I can feel this is ancestral spirits. Now how I'm going to, to conduct ancestral spirits in the hospital? The people here do not know anything about these spirits. Why they want to come here? I had that worry. So I said, okay, because it's like they are not going to beg off. Let me sit down, and then maybe as I will shake my body, they will realize that I don't want them to come here. It's in the hospital. The people don't understand the ancestral spirits here. So as I was sitting down, stretching my legs, and I was looking that side, and my body, now, the, the, the ancestral spirits were so strong that I cannot control, control them anymore. Then I said, okay, let me relax, let them come, and I will hear from them what do they want. As I was relaxing, the first one to come, is the, to come to hospital is the first one who, who came when they were training me. He was the, 
the first one to lead the, the six, the, 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 this other six. So it was my grandmother, my, ma my father's mother. And then she was, I, I felt she was inside my body. It's like I'm her dress. My body was her dress, she was inside. So she was singing singing uh, the, the songs, the ancestral spirit songs. And but that day, that song, I didn't know it. So I, I, I looked at my chest and I said, Grandmother, why did you decide to come to hospital? Here is in hospital, the people here don't understand the ancestral spirit. Who is going to help you? Even myself today, the, the song you are singing, I don't understand it. Oh, I, I'm not going to help you because it's better you choose another song. After saying those words, because I was stretching my legs, my, 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 my legs, so I see at the end of my, my, my bed, my legs, there were a bright light, white, so bright, more than the lights were still on, but this brightness was too much, was more than the light I see in the hospital. So I said, this one is my grandmother. And then, what is this bright light at my feet? So I, I, I just leave my grandmother. She was continue to continuously singing. And I said, I want to see this light. What is this light all about? So the, the, the bright light was something going up. It was not like something that is full, the whole world. It was on my feet and then it's going up. And I said, I said, okay, let me raise my head. As I was doing this, I see there is a man in this white, uh, in this white, I don't know to call it cloud or, but it was very bright. And the, there was a man standing there and was looking at me at my, right in my eyes. And I said, who is this man? I don't know him. I tried to, to look at him so that maybe I will know him, but I can see I don't know him. And I said, even if I don't know him, maybe if I can look at him carefully, I will know him. And if I know him, I'm going to ask him, to talk to my grandmother to go back because here is in hospital. So it's that time I looked at him seriously. And then as I was doing that, I saw him raising his right hand, pointing at my forehead. And as I was doing that, I can feel, I don't know how to explain this, but I can feel his finger. He was not, he didn't point at here. He was standing there, but as he was doing this, I can feel the, his finger touched my grandmother inside of me. And as he was doing this, he was pulling her. And then he did this. I saw him falling down, but like you are breaking the glass. And I was so scared. I said, yo, look at this man, what he did. He pulled out my grandmother out of my body and he... He destroyed her on this floor, and I can't see her anymore. I can't feel her in my body. I can't see her on the floor. What is going on? And who is this man? I don't know him. He was still standing there. And then the second one came. The body shaked again. It was, I was shaking again. And then the grandfather came, the husband to my grandmother. And then I said, Grandfather, what is your story today? Why, why did you decide to come here? This place is in hospital, and there is a man before me. I don't know him. He chased away my grandmother. He's going to do the same with you, Grandfather. And he said to me, No, my grandchild. Your grandmother came. I work with her. As she came, I must come. So I said, but you know, grandfather, this man is going to chase you away. And I, 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 leave, I, I left him, so I said, no, let me check. Because as I was talking to these spirits, I can't see this man. So until I'm done with the spirit, and then I said, 
Okay, let me check. Maybe he's gone. As I was raising my head to, to look, and then I see him, I saw him pointing at my forehead, and then point where he pointed my grandmother. So it was the same with my grandfather. The third one was my aunt, the child to these two. He did the same. As I was raising my head, I, talk, I, I, I spoke to her. I said, now, auntie, you followed your, your, your parents, and today you don't know there is a man before me. He, he, he chased my grandmother away, my grandfather away. He's going to do the same with you, auntie. I said, no, but I, I'm working with them. And then as I was... I was worried because in my heart, I wanted this man to leave so that this, they can survive. But as I was raising my head, I saw him pointing at my forehead. And as he pointed at my forehead, my forehead, so I can feel his, his, his finger touched this spirit inside of me. And even as he was pulling, I can feel he's pulling them out of my body. And then I see my auntie f uh, was falling where her parents went. And then I, after these three, now I had a very big worry. I said, you know, the fourth one, I used to like this spirit very much, very, very much. And then I said, okay, but now I understand this man is here to chase all my ancestral spirits away. Now I understand. But I don't want this one to come because I love him very much. His name was Majabula. I said, I don't want him to leave. So for him not to leave is for him not to come. But after saying those words, guess what? Majabula was here. And I fought with him. I said, no, you can't do this. I said, you mustn't come because today there is a man in front of me. I don't know this man, but this man managed to chase my grandmother, my grandfather, my aunt. He's going to do the same with you. And he said, no, but myself, I'm working with those ones and I have to come. I said, it's like you, you are you are a fool because if you, you can't see this man is going to chase you away, you are useless. After saying those words, I said, oh, let me check. Maybe he's gone. As I was raising my, my head, pointed at my, my forehead and my javula was gone, the same as the other ones. So that time, I can feel, you know, my power for, for Sangoma things is gone. It, it was like I'm empty after the fourth one. And then the fifth one came. I didn't say anything to, to him or he didn't say anything to me, the fifth spirit. As he came, I raised my, my head, he pointed at my forehead and he was gone. And the sixth one. I didn't talk to them, they didn't talk to me. So I left with one, the river spirit. And I said to myself, you see this man, he chased, He managed to, ch to, to chase away my six an ancestral spirits. But this one is so strong and cheeky. He will not allow him to, to, to chase him away. He's going to fight when he gets here. He's going to fight with this man. And if he can fight him and win, I don't worry. I know he's going to, to go and look for that other ancestral spirit and he's going to bring them back to me. And after saying those words, that river spirit was here. And he was demonstrating his power, but uh, it was still like the, the, the other ones. The other ones, was, was I, I felt them, they were inside my body. But this one came and sit here uh, on my thighs and was rolling himself, demonstrating his power, uh, making sounds. <clears throat> and I was watching. And I said, the, the, the hair was the dreadlocks, uh, and then he hid he hided his, his face with the hair. I, I couldn't see his face, but I can see the head uh, up to here. But from here to, 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 I couldn't see the legs or feet. It was like something that is rolling only. And then 
he, he said he, he made those sounds. <clears throat> I said yes. I told him this man, this one is so strong and cheeky, is going to fight him, and if he can only fight him and win, I'm not worried. I don't, I know he's going to collect all my ancestral spirits, bringing them back to me. After saying those words, I said, let me check because this one is doing this. Let me see what that what, what this one is going to do. As I raise up my head. I see him raising his right hand, pointing at my forehead, and then that, that spirit was gone as the other spirit. So I was left alone with this man that I don't know, was still standing there. And I said to myself, you see what this man did? He chased all my ancestral spirits away. They are all gone. Now I remain with him, but I don't know who this man is. Even if he's not saying anything, I can see he wants to come and live, and, and live in my life, but he doesn't want to live with uh, those ancestral spirits. That is why he chased them away so that he can be alone in my life. But who is this man? I don't know him and was not was saying anything and then i said okay but i understand now all my ancestral spirits are, are gone it means i'm no longer a sangoma because the things of sangomas they they work only if you've got ancestral spirits now they are gone it means i'm no longer a sangoma then i'm so tired i want to rest so the man was still standing there, looking at me. I said, okay, I'm sleeping. He will see to it, but I'm sleeping, I'm tired. Then I just throw myself on top of the bed like this. So after doing that, I saw him coming towards me. He was coming, but slow motion, step by step. As he moved his, himself towards me, it's like somebody was say, put your feet in order, and then you will, you will move again. Put your hands in order. It will move again. As he was coming, even to hear and to see the things in, in hospital, uh, it's like now I can't hear clearly, I can't see, but he was still coming. Now, by the time he was like here, it's me here, it's him. I thought he's going to throw himself on top of my body. He didn't touch my body. What I saw, I saw him pulling himself back. And he used, I don't know, I, I cannot measure that power. So I, I, as he was pulling himself back, I saw myself standing up uh, on top of that bed. And he gave me his back. Uh, quickly, I saw we were standing like this. It's him, it's me. So I took my, my, my hands, throw them on top of his shoulder. And I asked myself a question. I said, now this man is taking me, sorry, is taking me away. Where are we going? Because he was not talking until then. I said, now where are we going? And which door are we going to use to go out? This one or the other one? After saying those words, I didn't see him going to any of these doors. I saw him uh, going up uh, with me behind his back. So as he approached the ceiling, I saw him. As he, lo he looked at the ceiling, the ceiling opened by itself. And we go through and we remain with the roof. We look at the roof, the roof will open by itself. And then we go out. When we are out, I didn't see us like standing on top of the, the roof, like touching the roof. But we were standing, the roof was under our feet because I can see the, the whole roof of that colorful hospital. And he was standing here, I was standing like here. I said, oh, because I looked around, I saw the whole roof. I said, oh, this roof like look like this. I didn't know, but today I can see it all. 
he didn't respond to what I was saying. And I don't know why, why I was saying that, but it's what I've said. After uh, talking about the roof, I saw him starting to move and he started to, to walk. And then as he was walking, he didn't say anything to me. He just started to walk after I finished talking about the roof. And I followed him. So when we were start, where we started walking, it's like we were walking to, I can see, it's where I, I can see everything. But it was only me and him. Him in front of me, I was following him. So we went, we went, we went for a long time until where we reached uh, the other place. That place also was a very big place. And before he entered that place, he changed to a small fire. It was not a big fire, a small fire. But this fire, I can see, is walking in front of me. And I, I, I didn't change. I entered that place as I was that year. So I followed the fire. But that place is a very big place and is the darkest place I have ever seen in the whole world. And again, it's a pit going down. And we were walking like on top of this pit. And I was following the fire. And where I believe, I believe, is in the middle of that place. I started to hear people. People were, were, were talking, ma, but there was no one listening to, they were not listening to one another. They were talking, you can't hear what they are saying. And I was so scared. I, I said, you know, there are people who are living here. How do these people live here? This place is terrible. I cannot survive to stay here. How do they stay here? And I was so worried. I said, maybe because I can hear, they, they were far away from where I was. They were under this pit. So I said, let me check. I wanted to do this so that I can check. I said, maybe I will know one or two so that I can ask them, how do they stay here? How do they live here? This place, people cannot live here. So before I can put my hand here, for the first time from the fire came a voice, and that voice was a man's voice. He said to me, if only you can see the things of this dark place and the people who are living here, I want you to know that I'm going to leave you here. And I said, no, I, I don't want to see them anymore. So I didn't see anyone there, but I heard them talking. So I followed the fire until that fire comes out. And then it's for me to come out. After I, I, I came out of that place, I see now again the fire changed to a big bright light. That light was big. And then as I see the light, I see the city. That city was so beautiful. Before I even arrived at the gate, I can see it's a beautiful city. And I was so happy, 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 Rihanna. I was so happy to see that city. It was like, you know, I, I, I was in a terrible place. Now I came out to a big, bright city. My heart was so happy. And I, I, now I'm alone because the, 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 the man is no more there. The, the fire is no more there. Now I, I'm left with this bright light. And there's the city where I'm going. And the, there's the gate. I can see the gate, the golden gates. But there is no gate that closed. And there was no one at the gate. So I was so happy. I said, oh, now, there, there I'm going. I'm going to rest. After saying those ways that I left the world, I walk very hard in a dark place. I am tired. But now I'm happy because there where I'm going. So from my, I was at the gate, as I was saying, now I'm going to rest. I was at the gate. Then 
inside, but far away, not, he, not next to the gate. I heard a voice. That voice was a man's voice. And the voice was so, you see, if uh, the rain is going to, to, to rain, when the thunder, I don't know, you call it the thunder, when the rain say, that voice was like that. It said to me, Francina, look how happy you are. You are happy because you think you, you have a place to stay here. But I want to let you know that you, Francina, you don't have place to rest here. That time I was at the gate. And I was so scared and disappointed. I said, so I was no longer in the, in the world. I walked in a dark place very long time. Now I'm happy. I'm telling myself I'm going to rest. Now they chase me away. They say I don't have place to rest here. Now where I am going, because I was alone, where I am going, and I was looking right at my feet. So after asking myself that question, I raised up my head to find the two men sitting at the gate. One at my right hand was a white man. It was a white man. And then at my left hand, where the voice came from, it was a black man. So I looked at the, the man. I said, oh, this one is the white man, and this one is the black man. As I was checking on them, I heard people from my left hand inside, and they were praising God. They were saying one word one time. They were saying, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, Jesus is Lord, glory, Hosanna, Jesus saves, Jesus forgives. They were saying one word one time, and they were moving. I can hear now they are at the gate, they are passing us, going to my right hand. I heard them even when they were far away, but they came back again, same words. They were repeating those words until they reached where they started. Then they were quiet. When they, the, the, this one keep quiet, and then the white man started to talk to me, but he was using the, the language that I, 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 I'm using, the one that I understand very well. He, he looked at me, they were sitting down, and he was wearing white clothes, and then the, the black man was wearing the, the, the mixed colors. And then he started to talk to me. He said to me, you, uh, we have your case here. And I didn't respond. He said to me, you, Francina, while you were still on the world, you did one thing, but you repeated four times. He was showing me his fingers. He said, four times. I said, yes, Lord, I did that. He said, do you agree? But very soft, very, very soft. I said, yes, I agree. You know, Francina. I said, yes, I know. And he said, you, Francina, on earth, you killed children, but you did it four times. I said, yes, Lord, I did that. Do you agree? I said, yes, I agree. And he stood up. He said to me, Francina, check at my left foot. So I looked at his left foot. You know, I found those children. As he was telling me about them, I couldn't see them, but as, as he was saying, check at my left foot, I found those children there near his foot and they were pegged one on top of the other. I screamed, I cried, I did everything. I wanted to, because I was so shocked to see them. As I remember, I used to go to these people, those who were 
helping me with the abortions when I was two two weeks or three weeks pregnant. I, I've never seen a child. It was only a blood all this time. But that day, I found the children, and I knew them. I cried. I wanted to go and carry them, but he stopped me. He said no, and that time he was... He he wasn't happy because I wanted to to go and touch the children. So he said to me, no, 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 Francina, stand where you are standing. Don't touch these children and don't come near me. I will talk to you where you are standing. And I went back. I stand there, but my eyes couldn't leave the children. I, I wanted to touch them. My heart was so, you know, and it was hard. So he bent himself. He wanted me to see that really they, they, they are, they, what, what they are telling me is truth. He bent himself and he started to count them one, one. He said, one, two, three, four. He said, do you see these children? I said, yes, Lord, I see them. Who killed these children? I said, I did. I killed these children. And he said to me, do you agree? I said, yes. I said, you know, who did this terrible work? I said, Lord, I did this. And he said to me, okay, Francina, stand where you are standing. He, he, he left he, he left this children like they were scattered there. And then he sat down. I was standing. He said to me, Francina, now I want you to open your two ears and listen, and listen to me very careful, because I, today, am going to talk to you. And I was standing there folding my arms. He said to me, Francina, uh, God forgives you because God is the God of mercy and is the God of hearts. He checked your heart. He found that with your heart, you couldn't kill these children. You killed them because you have, their father didn't give you support. Now, because the God is the God of hearts, he says to your heart and he knew that with your heart, there was no way for you to kill these children. But now, Francina, listen, you, you are no longer a Sam Goma. You don't have any more ancestral spirits because I took them away out of your life. You were not sleeping. You were not dreaming. You were sitting down. You saw me as I was doing. And then now, Francina, I'm not going to allow you to enter inside. I'm taking you back to the world where you come from. Francina, because... You agree to the sin of these children. All your sins are forgiven. I, Francina, I forgive you and I wash you. And then I pour my spirit in you. You killed four children. I'm going to give you my four jobs equally to your children. The first one I give you to pray. You must pray for yourself when you get to the world. The second one, I give you to pray for all the people on earth, those who are sick, those who experience problems, those who have needs, pray for them only in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't give them anything. Don't make them to pay. If they believe in your prayers, all their problems will be solved. All their sicknesses will be healed. What they need, God will give them. And then the third one, I give you prophecy. So as he was talking about prophecy, because the prophecy that we know, uh, our churches here, they, they give people things. And so I thought maybe it's the same. And I was so happy in my heart because I said, you know, I trained very hard to be a Sangoma. Now listen, this man is taking my, 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 my Sangoma away. So simple. So when he tells me about prophecy, I said, at least I will be a prophet. I think of this, the prophet of the world. And 
you can see inside my heart because I didn't talk, but I was happy in my heart. He said, no, 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 Francina, I'm not talking about such prophecy. Those ones are the things of the world. Here, I don't know anything about those prophecy. Yours is different from the one you know. And I said, okay, it's fine. And then he said, the fourth, uh, the fourth task, the last one, I give you to go all over the world, telling the people about God, about what you have seen today, what you have heard, what we have done for you, is what you are going to tell the world. And then he said, uh, uh, I said oh, he went back to the children. He said to me, look, uh, look Francina, he went back to the children and picked them up and he was holding them in his hands. He said, do you see these children? I said, yes. He said, these children is a case. We are not going to throw them away. But in your name, your books are no more there. All your sins are forgiven. Not only the sin of the children, even those we didn't tell you about. For you to agree the sin of the children, all your sins are forgiven. But now I'm giving these children to this man. By seeing me doing this, I'm putting the children on top of their father's shoulders. From now on, they are going to burn him day and night until he dies, he come and stand here and answer about these children. But in your book, in your name, they are no more there. They are no more not remember. They are not going to be remembered again. All your sins are forgiven. And he said, "You, Francina, today you are saved. You accepted Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. You are washed by the blood of Jesus." Then I saw that man stretching his hands accepting the children and he put them on his thighs and I saw the children just vanish before my eyes so I am left with these two men and he said to me now I am done with you Francina you can go back where you come from go and do your job and then the other this black man he said to me no Francina before you, went, you, you go back to where you come from. Myself, I have a message. I want you to take my message to the man I, I, I'm sending you to. I'm not sending you to other people on earth. I've got only one man by the name of Joseph, the father of these children. Is the man I want you to take my message to him. Tell him to repent. Tell him to accept Jesus Christ. Tell him to be sorry with what he is doing. If he is not listening to you, don't force him to listen to you. You are going to tell him and leave him and you go and pray. You must know you, God, is going to fight for your life by day and by night. And Francina, don't forget... You, you saw God's mercy today. Don't forget about, about God's mercy. And he repeated everything that the first man uh, told me. He repeated every word. He said, you must remember, you, don't have, you are no longer a Sangoma, you are no longer, uh, you don't have ancestral spirit, you are saved, you are accepted, Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. He, he, he repeated every word. And he came where he said to me, Francine, when you get into hospital, ask the sisters in the hospital to call this man to come to hospital where you are. Be got up to seven before he start work. And to my surprise, we were working to uh, we were working for uh, city council of Pretoria. I didn't know our time to start working is quarter to seven. All these years I knew we start at seven. So when I come back, I came back from hospital, I went to my 
my, 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 my supervisor. I asked her, what is the time for us to start the job here? He said, Francina, if the, you, you, you'll be knocked by the car uh, uh, at about 22, 7. Uh, the city council is not going to pay. But because 22, you must take your uniform, and then quarter to seven is the starting for you to work. And, uh, you know, they told me in heaven, I didn't know all this, yes. So he said, you, when he come, tell him everything that I told you. And then these four jobs that you were given today, I say to you, you are going to start now when you get to the hospital so that the people here in hospital, they, they, they may be your witnesses tomorrow. They must see you doing these things so that they, they, they will be your witnesses tomorrow. But he didn't tell me if what had happened. So I said, okay, he said to me, even me too, I am done. Now, Francina, you can, you can go back uh, where you come from. Go and do your job. So that time, I said, I don't want to go back to the world. I know what is going on there. There is no peace. Tomorrow is this. Tomorrow is this problem. But I heard the people inside. But I was talking in my heart, and they were waiting for me to turn so that they they go back inside. I said, what shall I tell these people to allow me to get into inside because I don't want to go back. And I said, if maybe, but this one, I can't talk to him because the, the, the black man, the problem uh, with me by this black man is the one who said, I don't have place to rest. And another thing, as he was open, opening his mouth, his words were so strong, like the whole place was shaking. And the other words, it, it was like they were mixed with fire. But the, the, the white man, he, he, he was so soft, like he was angry only twice. When I want to touch the children, and then again with the prophecy. Only twice. But this one, you know, it was like I just said, thank God, because when I get there, my case was not with this one. I don't think I will be sitting here today. I think you will send me straight to that pit of hell. So I was afraid to ask him anything after he said, Francina, I'm done. Myself, I'm done. You can go back. I said, no, this one. I'm not going to ask anything. If I can say anything, he will say to me, you killed the children. Now we shown you mercy. You are still standing here talking about the things you don't know. He's going to send me to that pit. So I'm afraid of this man. So this one was so soft. No one said to me, I am who I am who. They they talked about God. There's where this one said, I'm doing this. There, even this one, he said, I'm doing this. So, but as they were standing up, they showed me that we, they are going back. I managed to, to know that this one must be Jesus Christ. I don't know how, but my hands were here that time. I said, Jesus for the first time, it is in 10. And I said for the second time, Jesus. And he turned, he looked at me. I said, please, allow me, my Lord. I want to get inside because I want to go and see Abraham. He said to me, my child, my child, I cannot allow you now to get inside to go and see Abraham. I have sent you, go back to the world, go and do my job. Next time, you will come back here. When you come, you are not going to stand here anymore. You will go straight inside. You will see Abraham, not only him. Many, many, many people are here inside, and they are happy. I said, yes, Lord. 
who are the people who are inside and they are happy? He said, my child, are those who accepted Jesus Christ while they were still on earth. They are the one who got born again while they were still on earth. They are the one who their sins are forgiven while they were still on earth. They are the one who are washed by the blood of Jesus while they were on earth. Yourself, you are you accept Jesus, you accepted Jesus Christ, you are born again, your sins are forgiven, you are washed by the blood, but this time you cannot enter. Go back and work. And from there, I didn't ask anything. And the way to come back, I, I cannot tell. What I remember, I ended up lying on my back. But when I woke up, I was kneeling down on top of my bed and I was praying all languages and I prayed for the father of the children. I pleaded with God. I said, God, please, don't, don't, don't kill him now, please. Because he said, if he said, if you are going to tell him, if he can say you are lying, is going to die where you will be with him. So I was pleading with God in my prayer. I said, Lord, look, you gave me chance. I killed four children. You were there watching, but you didn't kill me as I was killing one, one child, second child. You gave me chance. Here today, I am born again. I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Please give him chance. He will hear the gospel. He will repent. So then that time I woke up, I said, now what am I doing? Where am I? I? I was lost. I couldn't even realize I'm in hospital. I have to, to, to look around, to, to see people lying down. And by the time I see sisters and nurses, I say, oh, I'm in, I'm in hospital and I'm praying. Why am I praying? And I said, okay, let me lie down. Then... When I lie down, uh, it's when I hear, I, I, I felt somebody, he was walking on top of my body. Uh, he was walking like from, from my feet and then he was going to my head. And it was so nice. It's like, I felt like he can repeat many times but he didn't do that he started at my feet until on my head and then when when this one I, I didn't see him or it's him or her I don't know I just felt somebody is walking on top of my body and at, as he was finished I heard now the people those were inside where they said I can't enter I heard them now, they are here, near my head, uh, under the ceiling. They said to me, hallelujah, praise the Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus saves. They, they, they repeated those words. And they are, we are so happy, our sister. Today you, you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are born again. Your sins are forgiven. You are no longer a Sangoma. Your ancestral spirits, they, they, they repeated. And I said to them, because if you remember, these two men, they, they spoke about, I'm no longer a Sangoma. But they didn't tell me what to do about my muti at home. So I asked these ones, I said to them, uh, please, uh, I understand and I agree. I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But what to do with my muti because they are still there at my place, my home. They said, muti. I said, yes. They said, no. Take those things. You must, you must put them behind your back, very far from where you are, where even if you can think about them, you are not going to see them anymore. And take God, put God in front of you, follow him. I said, thank you very much. And they said to me, Francina, now listen, we want to give you a new song. This song, we are going to give you only the tune of this song. We are going to use uh, our melodies 
but you are the one to give the song the words. The words you will give this song, it will be the words of the song. And they started, there were men and women, there were many. They started, it was so nice to listen to their melodies. And, but they are waiting for me to bring the words. And that spirit, the man said, I pour my spirit in you. The spirit helped me. I found the words. The words were going like this. Now I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus forgave my, 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 my sins. Jesus, uh, show me his mercy. And Jesus is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is ever shining. When I come to He is ever shining, they alluviated and shout hallelujah, glory. That's the song, our sister. Every time when you remember this day, the 1st of August, 1988, the day of your salvation, you must sing this song. And I said to them, thank you. But I didn't see them. I just said them with my ears. They said, now, the last thing, Francina, is the time for you to start your work. But now we want to advise you, when you touch the floor, you are going to feel that you are thirsty. Our advice to you, don't take cold water until tomorrow morning. Just drink lukewarm water because you are from the theater. If you drink cold water, it's going to trouble your, your, your stomach. Take lukewarm water. You will continue with cold water the next day. And I said, thank you. So they didn't, they didn't say anything. They, the last words, they said, now you can start your work. So I will have to take my drips, my catheter, because I come from operation. So I, when I wanted to jump um, to the floor, I saw now between the sisters and me, there is a man. This man was a very tall man, very, very tall man. I've never seen somebody like that. And he was so dark, very, very dark, where I believe is the king of that dark place where I passed through. And I said, yo, I, 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 I didn't jump uh, on, on I, I went back on my bed. I said, yo, now who is this man? No, this one is not for God. This one, the people of God, they were telling me what they want, what must I do. But look at this one. He's so angry. He was so angry, very angry. Like if he, he can give him a chance, he will pull me into only two pieces. And I said, I don't know this man. Look how angry he is. And I, re I said, now, what shall I do? Because no one warned me about him. They, they, they advised me about water, but they didn't tell me about this man. So I said, mm, what shall I do? Because where he was sitting is where I must pass to tell the sisters what has happened to me. So I cannot pass. I must push him so that I can pass. So I said, what shall I do? I said, I remember the song the teacher taught me, taught us uh, 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 because my family, we were not going to church. So I only hear about God and church and the songs of church at school. So I remember the song from primary school that says, uh, Jesus uh, showed me his mercy. Uh, I was so bad, and but... Jesus' mercy came to my rescue. He, he, he didn't move. He was sitting there until I, I went to the words that says, but instead of that heavy punishment, I was washed by the blood. So as I was coating the blood, I saw him. He, 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 he didn't run. He, he, he was flying with his chair. And as he was flying, I, I heard, and he came from the side where the ancestral spirit have been taken to. So 
as he was flying, I heard, I thought the people that were talking to me, those who gave me the song, they were, they were God. But as he was flying, after I quoted the blood of Jesus, I heard them clapping their hands. They said, hallelujah, our sister, you have won. Now you can start doing your job. It's when I went to the sisters and um, I was trying to testify to them and they were fighting with me. I am crazy. They said to me, you, you ran from your hospital in Harangua. You wanted to come and run med in our hospital. It was that thing. And as I was going, really, when I touched the floor, I was thirsty. I want to drink water. Because I remember the first words to them. I said to them, they said, what do you want? I said, please, I want to ask you something. Ask. I said for them, it, it is good for me to drink lukewarm water. They said, can you drink lukewarm water? I said, yes, I can drink it. They said, go and drink lukewarm water. And then I went there, I find a white cup, paper cup. So I tested water. And then I felt it's cold. I mixed it until the water was lukewarm. And I prayed for that water, and I took it. And then I put the paper. So as I was moving, there was a, a very big cloud, but it was surrounding only me. Then as I'm moving, it, it, the cloud moved moves with me. So after taking water, I said, I'm going to sleep. So the cloud said, no, Francina, you can't sleep. Go and tell those people what had happened to you. So I went. As I was coming, they said, now what do you want? They were screaming at me. I said, no, but the Lord said, I must come and tell you. The Lord, you came here, Sangoma, now the Lord, which Lord? I said, Jesus Christ, yes, you are right. But now I'm no longer a Sangoma. I'm a born again Christian. And Jesus said, I must tell you. Tell us what? I started, maybe three minutes, they will say, no, it's okay, it's okay. we have had you, go and sleep. Then I couldn't fight. I left them. When I say I'm going to my bed, the cloud said, no, go and tell them. So I went to them three times, and they were chasing me. So as I come back for the third time, the cloud, that cloud that surrounded me said to me, Francina, I saw these people, they don't want to listen to you. I saw them. Now, leave them. Pull all the drips in your body and leave this hospital. And then in front of the gate of the hospital, there is a mountain. Go there. I will meet with you there. Go and pray. Leave these people. So I pulled out my drips and the blood was all over the floor. So... The people already, they, they say, I'm crazy. Now, as they were seeing those things, oh, really, she's crazy. And then I, they came to me running. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? I said, no, but God said, you don't want to listen to me. I must take out your drips out of my body and went to the mountain to go and pray. He will meet me there. They said, no, now you are crazy, really. And then they said, no, now we are going to phone the hospital, the security, and... At least the cloud allowed me to, to climb on my, bo my, my bed to, to, to rest. As I was lying there, it's when the, this cloud said to me, uh, I'm going to count from you uh, to your right hand. The fourth child there is so sick. Leave these nurses. I can see they don't want to listen to you, but listen to me. So go to that child. Uh, maybe she was, she was not my age. Maybe she was like 18 or 19 uh, or 20 maybe. And then go to her. She is so sick. And tomorrow the doctors, go. they are going to take her to the theater. And she's not going to make it. She's going to die there. So go to her. Tell her to accept Jesus and God right now. If she can listen to you, she's going to be healed tomorrow morning by herself. She will manage to take a chair and sit down by herself, and they will check her for theater 
but they are not going to find anything. So because now I'm 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 free, there are no law, no more drips and everything to carry with me. So I jumped and ran to her. I greeted her. I told her about Jesus. I told her about God. She said, yes, sister, I agree. I said, you must believe because the Jesus I'm telling you about, he raised me from the dead. I was dead, but now look, I am alive. It's because of Jesus. If you believe, you will do the same. Tomorrow, you are going to to get out of that bed by yourself. You will sit down as every as like every one of us. He said, I believe, sister. So there come the sister of the hospital. Francina, you are traveling, you are traveling other people because you don't want to sleep. You are running up and down. You are traveling people because you don't want to sleep. I said, no, sister, I'm not traveling anyone. What I'm doing is the command from God. He wants me to do this. And if you don't want to listen to what God says, leave other people, those who want to listen to the word of God. I was like you before. I will fight people who were talking about God because I liked my ancestral spirits. But today, the God that I was fighting with is on me, and there is nothing that I can do but to listen to what he says. So the sister said to me, now come, Francina, ourselves we want to hear. Now we are going to sit down and listen to you. And truly, they sat down and gave me this one hour to tell them what had happened. So at the end, they said to me, now, Francina, because you, you, you came from theater, we, we know you are tired because you were not sleeping. And then what to do? To, for you to rest. I said to them, if you can allow me to pray. They said, okay, we allow you to pray, but you are not going outside the hospital. You can check where you can pray. So the only place was the bathroom. And they said, and Joseph, we are not going to call him because we are going to scare him. So what we can do, we will give you discharge so that you go home and make sure you search for him. Give him this message. And then I said, okay, thank you. So I went to the bathroom, kneeled down, and I, the words that I, tell, I told God that night, I said, thank you, God, for what you did to my life, for forgiving me uh, my sins, killing children that were innocent. I was like Paul, who was killing the Christians, and they were innocent. But you show us uh, your mercy and love. And then this mercy and love... I ask you to pass to other children, not only me, but they are still there committing abortions because they don't know that you don't like abortions. And I said, thank you, Lord. So I went to the sisters. They said, now, Francina, you you are okay. I said, yeah, I'm not going to trouble you until the next day. I'm going to sleep. They said, it's okay. But what I've realized when I was praying, they were calling the doctors because as I was lying down on my bed, I saw maybe four to six doctors came to where I was and they were talking to... But when I want to talk to them, then the cloud is no more now. I can... Now I know it was the Holy Spirit inside, inside of me. He said, don't worry, fear not. They are not going to touch you. They are not going to do anything. And then I lied down. So they came. They were all white doctors, white people. And they said to me, uh, the, the, the sister told them what happened. And they said, but now she's calm. What did you do? I said, no, she asked us to pray. So when she came back, we saw her. She was like, this calm. And then that doctor said, no, maybe if you were, you, you allowed her to pray early, you, there was no reason to call us. And four of them left. They left me with two doctors. So the one asked me, how do you feel, Francine? I said, no, I'm okay, because I prayed. 
said, no, I'm not fighting for I just want to know. But you know what, Ceci, I can see you pulled out your drips out of your body. But we want you to have drips until tomorrow morning. So I'm, co I'm going to put them back because you need them. I said, no problem. And the doctor took the, the drips back to, to this hand. And he said, okay, because now she's okay. We are leaving, and then if she starts, you will call us. But I want you to look at what she 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 has written, it, the, 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 those papers, the hospital papers, where they took your address, your home address, your children's birth date. I want you to check. If she, she tells you what you have written here, then it means she's fine. Then the sister started to check, where, do, where are you working? City Council of Pretoria, tell him where, where vulnerable. Do we have children? Yes, how many? Three. Uh, how many girls? Two, one boy. Their best dates, I, I told her everything. Then he said, no, you are not crazy. I said, yes, I'm not crazy. He said, now you understand what happened to you. I said, I understand very well. I am born again. Now, what are you going to do with your muti and sangoma things? I'm going to bend them. I understand very well. So he said to me, Francina, please do not forsake God because you are only one who is lucky. You were dead. You are alive again. Other children, we took them to the mochari. So you must follow God sincerely. I said, no, I understand, sister. So I didn't do anything, but what I did, I prayed for people. The other one, these two, oh, this one was a child. She cried, cried very bitterly. So, but I didn't see her, this child. I prayed, I said, Lord, this is just a child. If maybe the, the parents... Uh, they angered you about something. Just forgive them for the sake of the child. And the child keep quiet. So the other one, I think, was a man. And it was like they shot him or they, 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 they used a knife because he was crying like he is dying. And I said, Lord, please, let this man not die. Look now, I'm alive. I will go out of this hospital. I'm going to see my children again. Help the man also to go out to see his children. And the man was quiet. So they gave me the discharge on the third day. Because the second day they said, no, there is no way you are going home. You are going to sleep again. If you don't do the things of yesterday, so the next day you will go home. So they gave me discharge. I came home. And I was, I don't know, like, it was like I'm a totally new person because I didn't know anything. I was, as I, I, I will catch a taxi, I will wait for the voice to tell me the taxi that is coming is the one that you must use. So I will stop the taxi. As I was inside the taxi, I, I, I know nothing again. When I'm about to where I'm going, the voice will come again. Tell the driver that you are now at the place where you are going. I will do that. So th these things, they, they, they went on for two months, as I was telling earlier. For two months, I can't think uh, for myself. I, was, I must wait for the voice. Even if I buy something, in a shop. If they give me maybe bread, I gave them 100 rand. They gave me bread first. I will just leave. But when I come back, I remember uh, I left my change. They will give me my change. So uh, I, lived, I lived like that for two months until one day, because where I was working, uh, I was working on Sundays, even on Sundays. So one Sunday, at about 4 a.m., I heard a voice in my right ear where there was a man's voice that said to me, 
Today, I want you to go and be baptized. So you are not going to work. Uh, and like, who is going to baptize me? Then I was given this name, Godfrey Street. Go to Godfrey Street. Tell him, I said, you must be baptized today. He will know what to do. So I went to him, it was 6 a.m. I went to him and tell him this story. So he took me to the place, they call it Beirut, this side of Winterfeld. And then when we get there, it's where he was going for a church. When we get there, we found a man from Mami Lodi. He was telling his story to the pastor of the church. God said, I must not attend my church today. I must come here, they say, woman. I must baptize. They said, no, there is no one to be baptized. We were coming at the door. So he said, this is the woman. So he took me to the river there and he baptized me. When I got out of water, oh, I was like this today. Can hear, I can see. Because before, as I was looking at the people, it was like, they said, last, that divides me and people. So people, they didn't understand. When you come, you say, oh, there's an accident in that corner. My ears were closed. When somebody come, I greet you in the name of Jesus. They were open. But that one, I, I, I saw that God was protecting me from my family, one, uh, two, for my th those people that I was... Uh, engaged with them the, the, in these Sangoma things because they came. They tried to talk me out of Christianity. No, you are, you are going to die. You can't just leave the river spirit like that. But as they were doing that, my ears were closed. I can't hear them. So God gave me two months period so that I can understand very well. So after baptism, as they come, I can answer them. So I survived. So that's my story of knowing Jesus Christ.